Today's lesson is all about making measurements. You might be saying, this one's easy. I've been measuring things my entire life. I measured my brother's height, and he's six feet tall. I weighed my dog, and he's 45 pounds. I sleep about eight hours every night. Those are all measurements. But in science, we want to make good measurements. We want to measure things as accurately as we possibly can. So today we're going to spend some time learning how to do good measurements. In the first example, let's see if we can figure out the volume of green liquid in these three cups. It's clear that in the first cup, there's zero liquid. There's nothing in there at all. In the second cup, the green liquid appears to be going all the way up to the top. Yes, in fact, we definitely have one full cup. In the third cup, it looks like we're not even halfway there. It's hard to estimate. I guess there's less than half, uh, maybe 0.3 of a cup, but it sure would be nice if we had some kind of markings or even lines to help us figure out the volume of the green liquid. Let's try this again with three new cups. In the first cup, it looks like the green liquid is going in completely up to the top. The second cup looks like it's also being filled entirely to the top. So far we have two full cups. Let's add on the third, but this one does not quite go all the way to the top. We know it's past the 0.5 mark. I guess I'd have to estimate 0.8. The total volume is 2.8 cups, but this doesn't seem like a very accurate way to measure volume. I wonder what instruments are used to measure amounts of substances in chemistry. The most commonly recognized piece of equipment in chemistry is probably the beaker. But did you realize that a beaker is not a measuring device? Let's see if we can figure out why. If we zoom in on the liquid in this beaker, we can try to determine the volume that the beaker contains. You'll notice that there are some numbers printed on the beaker. On this beaker, we see the number 250 and we also see much higher up the number 300. There's a line in between the two which provides us the number of 275 milliliters. You'll notice that's a difference of 25 milliliters between one marking and the next marking because there's such a huge gap between the increments. Beakers are not good measuring devices. A graduated cylinder is a better measuring tool for a volume of a liquid. Let's take a look at this one. We can see that there are several numbers written on the right hand side. We can see 250 and then a little bit farther up we can see 300. The green liquid in this beaker lies somewhere between 250 and 300. How do we narrow that down? If the 250 mark is here, our next mark indicates 255 milliliters. There's a larger mark that's harder to read because of the meniscus of the liquid, but this value would be 260. We could go one more up and get a value of 265, then 270, 275, 280, and so on. So what we're seeing is that the difference between the markings gives us a difference of 5 milliliters every single time. This is much better than the 25 milliliter increment that we were dealing with for the beaker. So now let's try to figure out the volume of this liquid. When dealing with a liquid like water, which has high attractions between the molecules, you'll often find a meniscus. A meniscus is when, at the edges of the graduated cylinder, you see the water level turn up slightly. When we try to determine the volume of a liquid, we always look at where the bottom of the meniscus lies. As we look at the different increments, we can easily tell that the volume is greater than 255. However, it does lie below the 260 mark. We can say for certain that the first two digits must be 25, but what's the last digit? We can tell it's somewhere in between 255 and 260. 
but when we're measuring we do have to estimate the last digit. A good estimation here would be 256 milliliters. Again, the 2 and the 5 were known with certainty. The 6 at the end was our best prediction. Whenever you make a measurement, you'll have to follow that same pattern. Here's another graduated cylinder. Let's see if we can determine the volume of this red liquid. The first thing we see are two big numbers. The first is a 70 and above it is an 80. If we look carefully at the lines, we can determine that every single line indicates one more milliliter. In other words, this would be 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, and so on. If we mark the bottom of the meniscus and try to determine the volume of the liquid, we can tell that the volume is definitely greater than 75 milliliters, but it's lower than 76 milliliters. Now comes an opportunity for us to guess that decimal place. Is it closer to 75 or closer to 76? A good estimation would probably be about 75.6 milliliters. The meniscus lies just a smidge closer to the 76 mark. You'll notice the 7 and the 5 were known with certainty. However, the last digit, the 6, was estimated with the best of our ability. Going on to another graduated cylinder. Let's figure out if we can find the volume of this orange liquid. The first thing we figure out is the numbers that are provided. We've got a 7 and higher up it's harder to see but this is an 8. That means if we consider every single line in between each increment must indicate 0.1 milliliters. This graduated cylinder has greater accuracy than the last graduated cylinder that we looked at. If we draw in the meniscus for the liquid as we look at the bottom of the meniscus, we can see that we have passed the 7.5 mark, we've passed the 7.6 mark, in fact, we've also passed the 7.7 .7 mark. So what would the best estimate for the last digit be? If you look carefully, the meniscus is a little bit closer to the 7.8 than it is to the 7.7. .7. A good measurement for this volume might be 7.77 milliliters of liquid. Again, the first two digits that we wrote were known with certainty because of the increments that were provided. The last digit was our best estimate. Typically, when you measure length, a ruler does a great job. But let's look at this yucky ruler. You'll notice that a normal ruler was taped over and very few increments were shown. You'll notice way down on the end we have 0 centimeters, in the middle about 10 centimeters, and then toward the right 20 centimeters. Where are all the small little lines? For us to find the length of this Tic Tac container, we're not going to have a great deal of accuracy. If we look at the Tic Tac container closer up, we can try to predict with the best of our ability what the length of the container is. But this is hard to do. There are no lines here. Clearly it lies between 0 centimeters and 10 centimeters. In fact, I could say it lies a little bit closer to the 10 centimeters than the 0 centimeters. My best estimate for this length would be 7 centimeters. You'll notice there are no decimal places. This 7 was not known with certainty. But what if we were to use a normal ruler? This looks a lot better. Look at all those lines. Let's see if we can take a closer look. Now we should be able to find a length with great accuracy. We can see that the distance lies between 7 centimeters and 8 centimeters. Are there any other digits that we know with certainty? If you look carefully, you'll see that the Tic Tac container passes the 7.2 mark. 
every single one of the lines indicates 0.1 centimeters and we've passed two of them so we know with certainty that the length is definitely 7.2 but remember whenever you're making a measurement you have to provide all the digits you know with certainty and then guess the last one so let's give this our best prediction it seems to me that the lip of the container lies just ever so slightly beyond the 7.2. For that reason, I'm going to provide a final length of 7.21 centimeters. When we measure mass in a chemistry lab, we use an electronic balance. You might be saying, this is great. I put the Tic Tac container on the balance and immediately I found a value of 19.82 grams. It seems like I don't have to do any work in terms of measurement. But you should be aware that the two that's at the very end of this measurement is actually estimated by the electronic balance. The one, the nine, and the eight were known with certainty. The balance knew that it was 19.8 grams. However, the last digit was estimated to give us a final value of 19.82 grams. When measuring temperature, we use a thermometer. Let's zoom in and see if we can find the temperature of this liquid. First, we notice the numbers. We have a value of 20 degrees Celsius and a little bit higher up is 30 degrees Celsius. The red on the thermometer lies midway between. Looking more carefully, we can determine that each of these lines represents one degree Celsius. That means we've gotten ourselves to approximately 25 degrees Celsius. But remember, we have to estimate the last digit. It looks to me like the red has just passed the 25 mark, just by a hair. So a good value for this temperature would be 25.1 degrees Celsius. The 25 was known with certainty. The last digit was estimated by us. Taking a look at another thermometer, again, the first thing we should do is look at the numbers that are provided. We have a value of 80 degrees Celsius as well as 90 degrees Celsius. Our red lies somewhere in between we can determine that each of the lines that are provided represent one degree Celsius. If we look at where our red mark is, we can tell that this has definitely passed the 84 mark, but has not quite gotten to the 85 mark. So you need to ask yourself, is it closer to the 84 or closer to the 85? It appears that the red is a little bit closer to the 85, so a good measurement would be 84.8 degrees Celsius. The 84 was known with certainty. The last digit was estimated. Let's talk for a second about math class versus science class. In math class, if you are given the following four numbers, 2, 2.0, 2.00, and 2 with a whole lot of zeros at the end, you would treat these numbers exactly the same. You see, in math class, these numbers all mean the same thing. But now, when you go to science class, you should understand that these decimals are telling us something about the accuracy of the instrument. The first value, the two, tells us that this was measured with very, very poor accuracy. We can think back to the ruler and remember how difficult it was to measure that length. Now, as we go down our list, we realize that by adding a zero each time, and by the time we get to our last value with a whole lot of zeros, we've now achieved great accuracy. Can you imagine measuring the Tic Tac container and understanding that we were able to get accuracy to this many decimal places, that would be astounding. Every single decimal place that you include is describing the accuracy of the instrument. The more decimal places you can take the answer out to, the more accurate the instrument you're working with. So in science class, it's important to understand that these four numbers are very, very different. One of them has poor accuracy, 
and one of them is extraordinarily accurate. What happens when you add measurements together that have different degrees of accuracy? For instance, if I take 4 centimeters, which we learned earlier from the ruler has very poor accuracy, and I try to add it to a value that has great accuracy, 2.295, what happens? Would you get an answer of 6.295 centimeters? The answer is no. When you take a value with very poor accuracy and add it to something with great accuracy, your answer cannot be more accurate than your least accurate value. In other words, our answer will only be 6 centimeters. We cannot have any decimals shown because our first value did not have any decimals shown. Let's review some measurement guidelines. You should know that each instrument has its own degree of accuracy. You need to look at the increments and the numbers to determine the correct number of decimal places for a given measurement. For any measurement that you make, you should write down all numbers that you know with certainty. Then, the very last digit that you include is a number that you had to predict. Finally, when adding or subtracting two measurements, you cannot give an infinite number of decimal places. Your final answer cannot be more accurate than your least accurate measurement.